So welcome to this annotated video on the brachial plexus. I'm going to detail the formation of the brachial plexus from its initial rootlets and how it goes on to form the terminal branches. So we all should be aware that it's the ventral rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 that goes on to form the brachial plexus and we call these the roots of the brachial plexus. Now ultimately these five roots are going to give rise to the terminal branches and you should be familiar with some of these terminal branches and they include the musculocutaneous nerve, there's also the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, the auxiliary nerve and also the radial nerve. So the brachial plexus, this network of somatic nerves starts off by the roots C5 to C8 and T1 and then gives rise to these terminal branches. Now as it passes from the intervertebral foramen through the posterior triangle of the neck into the auxilla we can divide the brachial plexus into five parts. We have the roots, these give rise as it travels distally to the trunks, the trunks continue distally as divisions the divisions then give rise to the cords and it's these cords that give rise to the terminal branches. So let's have a look at how these roots initially form the trunks. So C5 and C6, the ventral rami from these segmental spinal nerves converge together to form what's known as the superior trunk. A similar arrangement occurs with C8 and T1 with these ventral rami converging to form the inferior trunk. With C7, we don't have a convergence, but it just continues distally as the middle trunk. So from these five ventral rami, these five roots, we then have three trunks. Each of these trunks is then going to give off both an anterior and a posterior division. So if we look at the anterior divisions first, then coming away from this superior trunk is this anterior division, I'll just label it with an A. Also coming away from this middle trunk is going to be an anterior division, and this one travels distally to unite with the anterior division coming from this superior trunk. Again, I'll put an A by it. The anterior division coming from the inferior trunk just continues distally and it doesn't converge with any other division. So here we can see the three divisions coming from the three trunks. Also coming away from the trunks, if we have an anterior division, is going to be the posterior division. So coming away from the middle trunk here, we have a posterior division. I'll put a P here for posterior. And this posterior division is going to be met by the posterior division from this superior trunk. And this, as we can see, creates this X shape. So the posterior division from the superior trunk and the posterior division from the middle trunk converge. Also, the posterior division from this inferior trunk travels distally to unite with the other posterior divisions. So we can see all three posterior divisions from the three trunks all unite into this single point here. The two anterior divisions from the superior and middle trunk converge, whilst the anterior division from the inferior trunk remains on its own and travels distally. From these divisions we then have those cords. The cords of the brachial plexus are relatively simple as they're a direct continuation from the divisions, so the two anterior divisions from the superior and middle trunk, these give rise to the lateral cord, the three posterior divisions give rise to the posterior cord, and the single anterior division from the inferior trunk gives rise to the medial cord. It is these three cords that then go on to create the terminal branches. So if we look first of all at the musculocutaneous nerve. This is relatively simple and it's a direct continuation of that lateral cord. Similar arrangement happens with the ulnar nerve. 
being a direct continuation of the medial cord. The formation of the median nerve is somewhat more complicated as it receives a branch from both the lateral cord, you can see coming down here, and also a branch from the medial cord. And this creates that characteristic M shape arrangement where we have the lateral cord giving off the musculocutaneous nerve, the medial cord giving off the ulnar nerve, and branches from both the lateral and the medial cord coming together to form the median nerve. The posterior cord, this is a little bit more simple, the posterior cord just continues distally and it eventually it will bifurcate into two nerves, it will continue as the radial nerve and it will give a branch which is the auxiliary nerve. So here we can see this rather complicated network of nerves if we simply draw it out slowly and isolate the individual parts then hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. So to briefly recap we have the five roots C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. These give rise to three trunks. Each of the trunks gives off an anterior and posterior division and these ultimately form the three chords. And it's from these chords that the terminal branches are formed. Now for some of you, this level of detail will be enough and you can stop the video. But for the next couple of minutes, I just want to detail the remaining motor and sensory nerves that are also associated with the brachial plexus. Now these nerves specifically come from either the roots, the superior trunk, or the lateral, posterior and medial cord. So if we start with the roots, then originating from C5 is the dorsal scapular nerve. So DSN, the dorsal scapular nerve. Coming away from C5, C6 and also from C7 is the long thoracic nerve. So LTN, long thoracic nerve. So these two nerves specifically come from the roots of the brachial plexus. Coming from the superior trunk, we have the suprascapular nerve, and also from the superior trunk, we have the nerve to subclavius. So from the roots, dorsal scapular nerve, long thoracic nerve. From the superior trunk, we have the suprascapular nerve, and we also have the nerve to subclavius. Coming away from the lateral cord, we have the lateral pectoral nerve. And if we have a lateral pectoral nerve, we're also going to have a medial pectoral nerve. And this one comes from the medial cord. Also coming from the medial cord are two cutaneous nerves. These are the medial brachial nerve and also the medial antibrachial nerve. And these supply cutaneous innervation to both the medial surface of the arm and the medial surface of the forearm. Coming from the posterior cord, we have the foracodorsal nerve. And coming from either side of the foracodorsal nerve is the upper subscapular nerve and the lower subscapular nerve. So in this video, we've looked at the brachial plexus and how it's formed from its roots, C5 through to T1. It's formed the trunks, divisions, cords, its terminal branches, musculocutaneous, median, ulnar, radial, auxiliary nerve, and some of the smaller nerves that also supply the skin and the muscles of the upper limb and surrounding region.